In this lesson, we are going to take a look at the import function in concordance and how to take our dat file and place it inside the concordance database. We are taking the content of this entire file and placing it into our empty database that was built in the previous lesson. The import function is available here under the documents menu. So if we go up to documents menu and select import, we can see that there are multiple options available. We can import from another pre-built concordance database, import from a delimited text file, which is what our dat file option is. We can also import electronic documents, meaning such as Word or Excel files, PDF files, etc., directly into concordance without actually processing them as TIFF images. And if this database was actually built with proper fields, we can also import trial or deposition transcripts into a concordance database. There's also an overlay option and the ability to import emails and attachments directly from Microsoft Outlook. We'll go ahead and take a look at some of these other importing functions in a later lesson, but for right now, the feature we want and the one that you'll likely find yourself using most is the import delimited text function. So let's go ahead and select that for now. Once the option is selected, you can see that you are presented with three radio buttons, the import overlay wizard, the import dialog box, or the overlay dialog box. The wizard option walks you through step by step on the importing process. So if you ever get stuck or forgotten how to import from a delimited text file, you can actually select this option, hit the OK key, and you'll be walked through the import process step by step. However, generally I actually recommend using the dialog box approach. Once you learn the process of importing, you'll find it's much faster than the wizard and much simpler as well. Now before we actually proceed with the importing, let me give you a brief explanation of the difference between importing and this other option is overlaying. Let's open up the dat file and take another look at it. If I choose this import option, this dat file data will be imported one record at a time into the empty database that we built in the last lesson. This means that the information in this first row of text will become record one of the database row 2 here will become record 2, row 3 will become record 3, and so on until all the records have been imported. The overlay option, however, does not import. It replaces information. Meaning if we use the overlay option, row 1 will replace record 1, row 2 here will replace record 2, and so on. Now, because this database we're working with is actually empty, replacing information and importing information will accomplish the same task. But let's pretend that we already had 10 records in the database. Using the import function, row 1 in this file will now become record 11, row 2 will become record 12, and row 3 will become record 13, and so on. This new data from the dat file will be added to the end of the current database. If we were to use the overlay option in this 10 record database, then row 1 will again replace record 1, row 2 will replace record 2, and so on, until my original 10 records will completely be replaced by these first 10 rows. My previous records would then be lost from the database. That's the difference between importing and overlaying, and both have their functions depending on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're adding records to an existing database, we want to use import. If you are trying to replace existing records, then you'll want to use the overlay option. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and choose the import dialog box option and click OK. Once I click OK, I'm presented with several options on the screen. Let's go over each area briefly. These first two large boxes list the available fields and my selected fields. The available fields are all the fields in the database, and I can choose specific fields that I want to import depending on which fields I'm interested in. For instance, with this data file, I know that I have start page, end page, date, and doc type. So I'll move these fields in that order over to the selected field box by either double clicking on them or by highlighting them and clicking the select button below. And in this way, I choose which fields will have data imported and which order they should be imported. Now, in this particular demo database, I know that the data file contains all of these fields that I'm interested in. So I can simply quickly select all these fields with the Select All button down the bottom instead of choosing them one at a time. 
The reason we have the option to choose specific fields and to arrange the order is just in case that the data file contains only specific pieces of information. While a good vendor should give you a complete and consistent data file for importing, you can be sure it won't happen every single time. And sometimes you'll find that certain fields are missing or misarranged. And because of that, you'll need the ability to choose specific fields and arrange the orders according to your data file. Now to the right of the boxes are the types of delimiters that are chosen. We went over what delimiters are on a previous lesson. The delimiters will always default to concordance delimiters, but if you want, you can click on the drop-down arrow to choose the proper delimiters for your choice. In this data file, I know that the delimiters are default, and I can leave them as it is. And besides the delimiters, you also want to double-check to see that the date format is incorrect. In this data file, my date information is arranged in a four-digit year, and two-digit month, and two-digit day format. So it looks like I can leave that as it is as well. If you need to change the format, again, the drop-down arrow will provide other choices. Once you've selected the fields you'll be importing and the delimiters that will be used, you're pretty much ready to go. This Documents Loaded box and the Status box are just information displays. The Status box will display any errors that may be encountered during the loading. So for instance, if the text in the data file was too long for the field, that error will be shown here in this box and the number of documents or records loaded will be shown here. And this checkbox, ignore first line, can also be applied. What the checkbox does is to allow you to ignore the first line of text in the data file. The reason being that this first line is obviously a list of few headers and really is not actual information that should be searched or edited in concordance. These are just field names for which we already have in concordance here. However, while you can check off the box and import just the data lines, I generally actually like to leave the header lines in during the first import. This way, I'll have the first record be a repeat of the few headers, and it will be a quick and simple way to double check that the import was done correctly. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this box unchecked. With all my other settings in place, I'll go ahead and click on the Go button here. Once I clicked on Go, I'm prompted to find the location of the data file to be imported. So I'll just browse to the location of my demo folder and select demo.dat file. Keep in mind here that .dat is the default file extension for a concordance file. It could also very well end in .txt as a text file or .asc as an ASCII file or some other extension depending on where the file or data is coming from. So if you don't see the file you're looking for, just click on this drop-down arrow next to the file types change it to the proper extension or change it to all files to review the file. Once I've selected my data file, I can just click on the open button. And as you can see, since we only are dealing with 26 records, the process was pretty quick. If you import a data file with 100,000 records, the import may take a couple minutes. Once this is done, I'll click on the done button. Now I'm automatically taken to the first record in my database. Remember how I did not check off the ignore first line box? And now my first record is basically just a repeat of the field header names. And the actual data starts on record 2. And like I said, this is just a quick way for me to eyeball the results and know that the fields went into the correct places. Start page went into the first field, summary went into the summary field, etc. And now that I'm certain the fields are in the correct place, I'll just go ahead and delete this file by going to the edit button and hitting the delete icon on the bottom of the screen. And remember from a previous lesson, I'll have to quickly pack the database. And now that first record has been removed from the database and my first record is now correct. So basically leaving the header row in place is really just my own preference and you can do without it. But I personally feel better knowing quickly that the import was done properly. And to get the database ready for searching, remember to go to the file and select index so all these new records will be available for searching. Now basically the database text is ready and you can begin to construct tags, edit the text, search for the text, etc. The only thing we are really missing at this point are the images that should go with the database, which we will look at in the next lesson.